This is Curtis from Ace Bread Studios. Go wrapping up the blue chip picks of the Miami Dolphins on day two. Yesterday, I was a little uh, discombobulated, they would say. Uh, even though I didn't get the players that I wanted them to take today, I the plan was clearer. And, you know, it, what they say in Batman, it's not always the hero that you want, but the hero that you need is something like that. I don't know, what it, whatever that is. You know, my vision is physical. I guess I got that old Parcells type thing. But it seems like from everything that's happening in this draft, Miami Dolphins have a different plan in mind. So we'll go, you know, we'll go to picks and you'll see that they had two doors to go down. Physical or speed and agility athlete. So Javon Holland was the first safety taken in the NFL draft at number 36. And you might say, safety? <laughs> you know, don't we have McMillan? We got drafted Jones last year. We got Rowe. What's with the Holland thing? But as you look into it more, this, this regime and this defense has its own way. It's like Robert Frost, the road less taken. Now, I don't know where that road's going to go, but they've got their own road. And just as we saw that malleable, amorphous defense, the plan appears to be amorphous, but it's getting clearer and clearer. Now, Javon Holland, six foot, you know, 200-ish, around 197 or something. Not a big guy. Ran a 4 4 6, 40, but he had 20 ints interceptions over two seasons. And obviously, Brian Flores loves defense. Phillips was taken at 18, and you know that superstar talent, and I know there's a risk. Conservative old man wants, you know, he's afraid or whatever. This regime's got balls of steel. Defense is what, I mean, you'd figure they'd invest heavily in the offense. And they have. You know, Waddle's a big piece. Whatever you think about spending two picks on him and when he was taken, whatever the case may be, it's a big piece. And then later on, they drafted that tackle. But, you know, you got Howard, they put the extension on. Byron Jones, they brought it in. Brandon Jones, they, they drafted. Uh, Eric Rowe, they added in and gave him a new contract. And this is all to stop the passing game. And that's really, like, where the, the league is going. It's a space game of speed and agility. And Holland has very... Very good instincts. And he can play some slot. He can play deep. And it looks like that his role is to kind of like move McMillan out. He's going to play that hybrid-esque free safety role. Not really in the box. That will probably be Jones' job. But there was a run on safeties right after that. You know, for me personally, I wanted Williams. Javante Williams. I mean, so, you know, a team jumped in front of the Broncos and took Williams. And, I, you know, I was heartbroken, cried, cried in my handkerchief. But the Dolphins grabbed the safeties and then there was a run. And, you know, Trevon Morig was considered the number one safety in the draft. But he fell to the third safety take and Grant was taken by Atlanta after. So the Dolphins got the safety they wanted. And for them, it's critical to stop the pass. Maybe the tight ends, whatever. It's a plan. You know, a lot of the comps on him is Ha Ha Clinton, which is, that's great. You know, I love McMillan. McMillan's a great general. His, his ability to keep everybody in check and keep the ball from going over the top is very, very crucial and very good. But he's a little small and he lacks playmaking ability. Well, what we see here from Holland is that he can make those interceptions. Now, if you add Xavier Howard to that, and now you add a playmaker over the top 
who can make those interceptions. Look what Howard did with those 10, 11, 10, I don't know, 10 or 11 interceptions, 10, I think. 10 interceptions, how it changed the season. And and, and that's, that's who this team's about. Big plays. And they're going to go for it. Now, as much as I was a little surprised, the rest of the picks began to refine what direction they're going to go. Now, there was a, after the safety run, there was a tackle run. And Tevon Jenkins was, I wanted Williams, I wanted Jenkins. But if you see my mindset is like the Titans mindset. Get in there, physical, beat you up. You know, we're going to get down that field slow, we'll beat you up all the way down. Come fourth quarter, we're going to win. But it appears that Brian Flores, Chris Greer have a different mindset. And that is big plays, speed, space, big plays on defense, turnovers, sacks, get ahead, finesse type football, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes it can be, you know, if you get into the cold areas and, you know, you have to play a physical game or whatever. But you look at look at Kansas City does. You know, Kansas City gets ahead. A lot of these teams now, that's what they're doing. So Williams was taken. My, I was, my heart was broken. Then there was a run on tackles. And Jenkins was taken, who I really, really liked. And then Dolphins traded up to get Liam Eckenberg. And I was like, oh, my. Dolphins got beat to the punch again. I'd rather have physical Jenkins beating people up than Eichenberg, especially with the extra third-round pick from last year invested in. But as you look a little deeper and you see that Jesse Davis dropped that 325 to 310, and you look at Eichenberg and he's, just barely over 300. Big, big boy, 6'6", 300. But the good part with Eichenberg, he's got a lot of strength. Benched 33 reps, and he never looked like he had a strength issue. So I mean, that's a really good feel for Eichenberg. You know, but like Tevon Jenkins, is just, you know, 20 pounds heavier, more physical. But Eichenberg had 38 starts at left tackle. And his ability to play left tackle, right tackle, and slide inside the guard, that fits the mold. It's the plan. It's Brian Flores' plan. And at a certain point, A, as fans and commentators, I'm both, you have to put yourself in a position to realize you know less than Brian Flores. Now, and sometimes we just, the problem is we as Dolphin fans, we've been more right than our coaching staff for so long. So long that we've made better decisions than the GMs and the coaches. But the reality is if you go back to when Don Shula was here, for the majority of his career, he knew more than you. You go look at Bill Belichick, for the majority of his career, he knew more than his fans. And it's quite possible that we've entered into that phase. Now, time will tell. You know, we're a lot of us, you know, some of you younger fans don't know the pain. You know, I've been on this ride since 1978. And so there's a bit of fear. Jade, before I drop dead and they put me six feet under, I want to see this team win a Super Bowl. So there's that angst. And I know fans that I talk to all the time through Finn's News that are older than me. They remember the glory days. And they're like, you know, just before I die, I want to see this team be good. So there's a level of angst. But there is a plan. Jenkins is power. Williams is power. With Holland and Eichenberg, we're playing finesse, agility, and athletics. Now, Eichenberg isn't a great athlete. Good feet. Hands have problems. There's a times when he puts two hands. You see, as, as, on the NFL level, when you block, you have to be able to operate your hands independently. Double hands means double sweep and you're finished. <laughs> Defensive guy just swipes it, you're done. But it's easier to correct hands than feet. 
And Eichenberg has 38 starts, good run blocker, flexibility, just like Jesse Davis, but obviously a higher end talent, similar size. You know, you can see St. Jackson's bigger, but younger. I mean, eventually he's going to become best of both worlds. But then it's like they go to tight end with their third pick. They're picking the third round. And Tommy Tremble was available. Tommy Tremble. If you watch Tommy Tremble, old school guys love, like me, dinosaurs like me love Tommy Tremble. Tommy Tremble pounds people into the ground. Physical run blocker, best run blocker in college last year and maybe for a while. You watch Tommy Tremble, it's easy to just fall and get that me, that guy. What do the Dolphins do? They got Hunter Long, a tight end. Now, they got Smythe, they got Gasecki, they got she, uh, Shaheen, you know, but now to bring in Long, who's 6'2", 6'3", ish, 235, 40, more in H back, when they could have got the f- three times they passed on the physically dominating player to get the versatile player who's more about athletics. Now, Hunter Long's not a great inline drive blocker. He's a move blocker. So it looks like with this new system that we're bringing in, we're going to create lots of space. We're going to have lots of movement. We'll have an H back. We'll move him around. We'll create angles and we'll use athleticism and speed to make big plays. And as much as I didn't like certain parts of this, because of my personality type and my desire, I do appreciate that they relying on Ahmed, uh, Ahmed, and they're relying on Gaskin. I am a big fan of Gaskin. Okay, I think he's a s- semi-special back, and what they're building here. I mean, I'm waiting for the center. Still a little concerned. I mean, it looks like they're bringing in gigantic guards, light tackles, agile tackles, move blockers on the exterior, creating space. Gaskin from out of the backfield, his ability to, when you, I'm going to create tape on him. And you'll see that with the limited amount of space, what this kid can do. And if he's given space, it's going to be an excellent year. So I'm glad they're relying on, I still think they need to find a running back, you know, I still think they need to find a but but they're really believing in Gaskin. And I like that because I like the kid. So day one had me shell-shocked, you know, or they call it a cognitive dissonance. You get emotionally attached to an idea and you have a hard time being logical or seeing other perspectives. So my mindset was, let's get physical, let's beat these pedims up, let's go that route. But that's not where we're going. So now I've kind of recovered from day one. Day two at least shows me there's a plan. It looks coherent. And as much as I'm still uncertain, and I still don't like overpaying, I still know I can be wrong, Brian Flores knows more to me. And as a bunch of fans out there said, trust the process. I totally believe that, but I'm not a zombie either. I got to call it like I see it. I told you. I got to call it like I see it. I've been watching since 1978. I know the game. Sometimes I've been right for a real long time because you had garbage coaches for a long time. But I see a coherent plan that I haven't seen. And I see success. And I see overachievement. So while this wasn't the draft I wanted, it might be the draft I needed. So fans, at least we have a plan. Going to have to, some of you love it. And um, oh, what was his name? Where's his name? Where's his name? Bart De Palma. De Palma, great director. De Palma's a great director. Bart De Palma. He, uh, when I put out the Waddle pick, I was like, you know, melting down. I was, I need somebody, I need to call out to somebody to get me off the ledge from jumping. And he posted some really good comments, some really like insightful comments. And, you know, some of the things I kind of understood, but it was like, I needed the slap in the face and the cold water to like shake me to wake up. 
And I really thought he did a good job. So Bart, great name, very tough, cool name. Thank you for the wisdom. I appreciate you guys' comments. Again, this is about a community. This is about Finn fans coming together. We all want to win. Some of us are right sometimes. Some of us are wrong sometimes. We all want the same thing. So let's hope that the plan is the one we need in 2021 and beyond takes us to where we want to go. So thank you for staying to the end. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as I said with Bart, the comments mean a lot to me. I do this because I love the game. I mean, you know, I do it. I like to get paid. <laughs> I like to do this thing, but, but I love the game. And I love information. I love knowledge. And I love conversation. I miss the old days of being in the bar. So please, like, comment, and subscribe. Most of all, comment. Thank you for staying to the end. Hope you enjoy the rest of the dead draft. Dolphins do great on day three. Uh, pick, find some really good players. So there's plenty of fun left. Take care. Be well.